Well, hello, everyone. Uh, this is uh, my attempt at putting together some videos here. Uh, nothing too elaborate or fancy, but basically some small segments of uh, lecture material so you can go back and catch them. I'm going to try to keep these to five to 15 minutes a piece rather than doing some long ones, and hopefully they will help you out as uh, uh, little segments uh, uh, of lecture put to video. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. <clears throat> First of all, we're getting started. So obviously what we're here to talk about is what is psychology? I mean, that's you know one of the very first questions you have to address if you're going to turn around and take this class. And if you look in your textbook, you get a definition that pretty much says psychology is the science of behavior and mental processes. <clears throat> now, what does that mean? Honestly, we are a science. We are not a, uh, a dreamed up version of anything. We are not your opinions. We are not uh, the ideas that people threw together in a group and say, hey, there it is set in stone. We have done research. We have tested things. We have checked things. We have run experiments. We've done correlations. We've done naturalistic studies. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is what we are all about. Okay. We are the study of behavior, how people act how organisms react, how uh, organisms don't act, okay, uh, and interact. So how they act, react, interact, and don't act. That says an awful lot. Know this, it's not enough to just look at outward behavior because you also have to consider what goes on in a person's mind. Okay, at a given moment, they may not be doing much as they sit in a chair, but you can't tell necessarily if they're happy or if they're sad or if they're elated or if they're depressed or if they're angry or if they're something else. So that's the second part of this definition, mental processes. I have long since used the example of these two gentlemen, Tamerlan Sarnoff and Zokar Sarnoff. If you look at the picture of these two brothers, you may think to yourself, well, they seem, you know, fairly happy. Uh, Tamerlan's the picture on the, on the left. He's smiling. Zokar is the picture uh, of the gentleman on the right. Got the, the, the little flower there. Um, probably have gone to a dance or something formal. Um, believe it or not, if you don't know who these people are, these are the two Boston Marathon uh, uh, bombers. Okay. And these two people with their smiles and all that had little trouble trying to kill people at the finish line of the Boston Marathon. That is a given. That's not even up for debate. Okay, uh, Tamerlan uh, on the left was shot and killed in a shootout with Boston police where he was shooting at them and they shot back and he lost his life. And uh, as of this recording, his brother Zokar is in prison waiting to go to um, before the courts. And he, you know never has denied the fact that he tried to kill people. What goes through a person's mind to think that it's okay to do that? That's mental processes. And that is the definition you need to know, the science of behavior and mental processes. So step number one, that's what our definition. Please know it. <clears throat> then we talk about who are psychologists. I ask my class a lot of times, who do we typically think of when we hear the word psychologist? What, what, what title, what person living today uh, do you think of as a psychologist? And the answer I get mostly is that of Dr. Phil. Okay, because when people think psychologists, they think of clinical psychologists or counseling psychologists and things of that sort. That is one of the fields, but it is by no means the only field. So let's talk about some of the different types of psychologists. As I just mentioned, there is what is called the clinical psychologist. Now, the clinical psychologist, he or she is the individual who turns around and works with individuals or groups uh, to basically help people with their behavioral, cognitive, which is mental, or emotional problems. Okay? Most clinical psychologists typically have a very strong background in biology, and they have gone through at least two years of uh, education to get a master of science degree that's beyond their bachelor's you get your bachelor's degree and you put in at least a minimum of two years to get a master's degree or four years to get a PhD and here's an interesting question for you what does PhD stand for 
Most people know that uh, the, the D in PhD is doctorate. It's the PH part that surprises people, and the answer is philosophy. If you have a PhD, you have a doctorate of philosophy. <clears throat> you can have a PhD in, in psychology. That's a doctorate of philosophy. You can have a doctorate of philosophy in mathematics. You can have a PhD, a doctorate of philosophy in English or engineering. You can have a doctorate of philosophy in philosophy. All right. Uh, clinical psychologists have to put in approximately four years, sometimes more, to get a PhD from a, uh, a program and therefore can be called a doctor. If you have a master's degree, uh, that usually takes two years. You can't call yourself doctor, all right? And that's a big, big difference, okay? One last thing before I move on from this, there's also the psychiatrist. Know the difference between a psychiatrist and a psychologist, clinical psychologist. A psychiatrist has a medical degree, an MD, okay? And the psychologist, the clinical psychologist, has a PhD. And since the psychiatrist is a medical doctor, he or she can turn around and prescribe medications. A clinician cannot. All right. uh, if you're curious about job opportunities for clinical psychologists, one site you can look at is called uh, usajobs.gov, G-O-V. USAjobs.gov. I'm not going to go to the site right now, but you can go in there and type in clinical psychologists and see what uh, jobs are out there working for the government, uh, you know, in one of the hospitals, the veterans hospitals and things like that. And so there is work that can be found. Some people are not interested in learning all the biology that comes with a clinical psych degree. They want to go help people, but they're not interested in going through all the, uh, the, the biological stuff. So they get a degree in counseling psychology. Counseling psychologists are individuals who turn around and deal with more moderate problems, relationship problems, uh, friendship problems, uh, things that are not biologically based in that regard. You can turn around and get a master's degree or a PhD in that as well. I think the University of Missouri, Kansas City, UMKC, actually has a PhD in counseling psychology. And uh, there is demand for that. The clinical psychology uh, does better than the counseling as far as demand, but you can still find work in that regard. Another field is for those people who like business, uh, and they like psychology, it's called industrial organizational psychologist. This is probably the second biggest field out there. Some call this the IO psychologist, all right? These men and women turn around and work with individuals in terms of uh, hiring, training. They work more for businesses. Uh, performance evaluations, if you've ever been evaluated on your job, um, they also deal with things such as leadership issues, uh, motivation in the workplace, violence in the workplace, and so on. Okay, There is a website for them called SIOP, S-I-O-P dot org. And SIOP, uh, Society for Industrial Organizational Psychology, is a very big organization. I'm part of that group. And uh, they basically work with businesses to help uh, in so many different ways. It's a website worth checking out. Probably one of the fields that is surprising a lot of individuals right now is the experimental or statistical psychologist. A lot of people don't think in this terms, but you got to know this. When it comes to business, anymore we find a lot of times individuals turn around and uh, have pretty much regular behavior. We love to think we're complicated, that we change things up, but we don't. We tend to get up around the same time almost every morning. We tend to go through the same routine. We drive to school or work pretty much the same way. Statistical and experimental psychologists are those men and women who turn around and work to understand uh, customers, consumers, uh, uh, people in general based on uh, the, the websites they go to, the clothes they buy, the purchases they make, and so on and so forth. And this kind of data is used in droves by companies to try and figure out what's the next product to buy or to offer, uh, what is the next uh, thing we should go with, and so on and so forth. You can, if you are one who likes numbers and statistics, you can actually find work using with just a bachelor's degree in uh, statistics or experimental psychology. Okay, so there is work to be found. 
Maybe you like Law and Order. Maybe you like uh, shows like NCIS, okay, uh, or some of the other variations of uh, shows out there, and you like psychology. Well, there's a field out there called forensic psychology. Forensic psychologist is psychology and the law. Uh, people that work in the forensic field turn around and work with law enforcement as profilers, trying to give you an idea of the type of person that commits a certain crime. Uh, they work um, for uh, judges, uh, more for uh, lawyers, I guess I should say, than judges. Uh, they work more for lawyers, uh, helping to prepare clients. They work uh, to help pick juries. Uh, the demand, the work can be exciting. The demand, to be quite honest, is not always as high as one would hope. So I don't want to fool you into thinking that there's this tremendous demand. I, John Gammon, have done work in the past as a forensic psychologist. But um, the work happens where I'm called in to handle a case or something like that. And I might get one or two or maybe three cases a year. And then there have been years where I barely get one, you know, so I, I keep on teaching and doing other things. If you like uh, the law and you like psychology, you can get a degree, I think it even at Wichita State University, I think has a degree in forensic psychology. I know there's one up in Chicago. The demand is not through the roof by any means. So if that's something you're interested in, I just don't want you to spend two or four years getting a master's or PhD and then find out it's not all that you'd hoped. If you like sports, okay, and you like psychology, there's sports psychologists. Sports psychologists are uh, women and men who turn around and help you with the mental aspect of the, your game. Uh, focus, concentration, uh, dealing with stress and things like that. Um, you know, if you're shooting free throws and uh, a college basketball game and you've got about 250 fans behind you uh, or behind the, the the goal that is waving everything they can to get you to you know not pay attention break your concentration does it work or not uh, that is a lot of what sports psychologists do it's a very fascinating field Arizona State University and Iowa State uh, University both have degrees in sports psychology and for what it's worth the demand, eh, it could be better, okay? Most professional teams have sports psychologists with them already, so I doubt you can get a doctorate and just walk into Bush Stadium and say, hey, I want to be the new sports psychologist for the Cardinals. They'd probably tell you to line up, and there's eight people ahead of you or 18 or 80 people ahead of you. I'm not trying to talk you out of it, but I don't want you to spend years prepping for a degree that uh, doesn't have the highest of demand. Real quickly, some more. If you like sales and business, uh, there are consumer psychologists. They work with marketing agents and things like that to help us better understand consumer behavior. Engineering psychologists, very fascinating field. Um, I'm going to be a little politically incorrect here, but it just rolls off the tongue. They focus on what is called the man-machine relationship, or in other words, human factors. How can we help to design technology to work with the user? Because you are the user. You have a finite number of arms and legs and eyes and stuff like that. You know, how can I design the technology to work better with you? Okay. Uh, University of South Dakota at one time had a wonderful program in this. A friend of mine was going through it and actually had a lot of trouble getting in touch with his new mentor. Why? Because his mentor was being flown down to NASA at Cape Canaveral all the time to help resolve problems and fix things. So at that time, there was a lot of work to be done. Educational psychologists. These men and women are not high school counselors. These individuals turn around and try to understand behavior in the classroom. Some 20 years ago when Columbine happened and a couple of students started to do a horrendously terrible thing and shoot and kill people, it was the educational psychologist that came in to try and understand behavior in the classroom and make sense of that kind of stuff. So that's a lot of what they do. Additionally, whoops. I'm sorry. All right, that's all I have for right now. Uh, I will get into the history of psychology a little bit later. Uh, good job, everyone. Uh, keep up the great work. Take care now.